trichromes is You can keep your activists in the styrofoam lids I'd rather just smoke dank, that's how I miss Once I start twisting, I don't stop, it's therapeutic if you can't... Thanks for roaming up to Blunt Marley And this is Certified Piehead Smoking on one of my um nighttime spliffs You know what you about to do, better cup You about to take a look at these Cannabis Conspiracy Theories which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Tonight's theory involves Shakespeare. For centuries, scholars have ransacked Shakespeare's sonnets, combing through the lines to find love, wisdom, and the occasional naughty joke. But what if all this time they've overlooked the bard's greatest hidden gem? What if Shakespeare was not only a poet, but an Elizabethan era secret king of cannabis cultivation? Yes, indeed. Beneath the florid metaphors and grandiloquent rhymes there lies a horticultural holy grail a step-by-step -step guide to growing weed concealed in verse like literary fertilizer let's unearth the bard's bud line by line all right look people shakespeare had a flair for flowers he filled his sonnets with buds blooms and blossoms you might say he was talking about love beauty or the fleeting nature of life but anyone who's cracked open a sonnet knows he wasn't a straight-laced flower child. Shakespeare was punning on buds before we even knew what buds meant. And all these fairest blooms and buds of May, they weren't just pretty words. They were secret grower's instructions from the OG of oregano himself. Here's a riddle for you. Double, double to you in fright. In Scotland's mist on the stormy night, I'm haunted by visions of guilt and gore. Cursed by witches, fateful lore. What play is that? Each sonnet reads like a chapter in a horticultural handbook, with every line as carefully planted as a merry golden may. Sonnet 1. That's your beginner's guide to budding, where he urges us to start with fairest buds so they don't wither and die. Translation. Grab the finest seeds, people. By Sonnet 18, we're in a vegetative state, basking in a summer's day. Sunlight, people. Get those greens some rays. Sonnet 73. With this talk of yellow leaves and bare ruined choirs. Spells out harvest season as plain as a greenhouse tomato. Shakespeare was greener than any thumb we know today. His verses were like potting soil for the literary mind. Here's another riddle for you. I look like a man, a woman, am I hiding my heart with a cleaver disguise? Cleaver. Clever disguise. My love is caught in a tangled mess. But in the end, all is dressed to impress. Who plays that? Here's the kicker. Shakespeare didn't just leave his grower's guide in plain sight. The sonnets must be read backwards, like hidden rewind on an Elizabethan mixtape. For example, Sonnet 20, which reads backwardsly, practically screams organic march with phrases like dew of the morning. What are those plants? And herbs of potent kind? It's as if Shakespeare himself is whispering secrets about fertilizing ratios and nitrogen levels from beyond the grave. When read in reverse, the sonnets reveal everything from ideal humidity nutrient tips, like there's some kind of early English grower's digest. Reading backwards is the key. A cracking a renaissance cheat code. A hack so big it would make even the Da Vinci drop his brush and pick up a garden troll. Riddle time. A love so deep it's sealed with a vow. Get torn apart by a deadly row. A tragic end so young, so fair. Tell me the names of this ill-fated pair. Shakespeare wasn't just a poet. He was a natural botanist. He meticulously describes the seasons of life, and in doing so, gives us the four essential phrases of the growth cycle. Summer represents the vegetative state, with Sonnet 18 as the ultimate ode to sunlight, as plants stretch skyward. Fall. The harvest is chronicled in Sonnet 73, full of yellowed leaves and all that maturing business. Winter, that's your curing phase, where buds are left to dry in darkness. Spring, well, that's when you start all over again, planting fresh seeds. It's the green cycle of life, as nature intended. The bar may as well have been a walking grow bible. What more riddle? In Venice Fair, I took the stage, my jealous mind of foolish rage. My trusted friend turned foe at last. My loving wife lost to the past. What play is that? The skeptics who say this is sheer madness. I say, have you ever truly understood Shakespeare? He was a punster, a trickster, a master of hidden mess. Blah, 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 bl
hidden meanings. Scholars who claim the sonnets are just about love and aging are the same folks who miss Shakespeare's innuendos in plain sight. They overlook the buds, the blooms, and the flowers, thinking them mere symbols rather than highly literal horticultural instructions. As for me, I'm convinced the bard was a renaissance hidden horticultural poet and secret cannabis cultivator. Cut, cut, blah, blah, cultivate, blah, blah, words, people. Cannabis cultivator, all road. His words weren't just beautiful, they were instructions in disguise. A guide to the good green life, centuries ahead of his time. So, next time you crack open a sonnet, don't just read it, grow it, nature it, and let it blossom. And ask yourself the age old question to weed or not to weed? The answers to the riddles Beth, Twelfth Night, Romeo and Juliet. And Othello. See y'all in the next one, bruh.